Do you know, a couple of hours ago, this place was a cauldron of excitement. All the stands here behind were full. Applause. Applauding, of course, a great winner, Johnny Miller, who I think played magnificently over the last 18 holes. Of course, he was the most experienced player in the early group against young Ballesteros, who I thought brought a great breath of fresh air into this championship. And I think there's a great future ahead for him. Jack Nicholas again finished second, tied with Ballesteros, and just adds one more great chapter to his already magical record in world golf. But now when they've all gone away, although still some are celebrating round about me, it's nice to savour some of these great moments and enjoy on film, for your enjoyment, I hope you'll enjoy it anyway, the moments of the 1976 Open Golf Championship. Some may say not the greatest championship ever. Personally, I think there's never been one more exciting and it's nice to enjoy things that are exciting with an old friend. Cheers, have fun. This was the open when everything seemed to happen. That this would be an unusual open became clear on the first roasting day. The championship, whose traditions, character and links are essentially British, and whose winners are as often as not American, was led jointly by a Spaniard, an Irishman and a Japanese. Oh, played it well. Played it well. The Japanese was Norio Suzuki, who'd never played outside his native country. The Irishman was Christy O'Connor Jr., who'd never aspired to a major world championship and the Spaniard was Severiano Ballesteros, who'd certainly never dreamed of beating Nicholas's and Miller's. He was, after all, only 19. On the second day, a more credible pattern emerged, though not entirely at the expense of illogicality, for the boy Belesteros was now six under par and led outright by two strokes. But inevitably, the power of world golf had begun to close in. Gary Player, Johnny Miller, Jack Nicholas, Ray Floyd, Floyd, the current Masters champion, second shot to the ninth. And what a good shot it is. Beautifully played. The crowd so far had been huge. On the first day, a record 17,500. The hot air stood still enough for a man to score well. And for the over 40s, it was tiring, torturing work. And Arnold Palmer is 46. Roberto de Vicenzo, 53. And Gene Sarazen, Open champion 44 years ago, 74. On the first day, Sarazen didn't return a score. Was that then his last shot to a championship green? Next year, at 75, he may or may not decide to return. These poignancies remind us that modern, high-pressure golf is a young man's game. Severiano Ballesteros, only 19, a Spaniard in Lancashire. Everyone enjoying him and waiting for him to vanish from the leaderboard. So, to the third day, when wind and weather were to change, and change the scoring. They need the rain, I'll tell you that. Yeah. So I've never seen it so dry in all 
the years I've been coming here. When the rain stopped, the wind blew in off the sea. And now many of the second round contenders became yesterday's men. The United States Open champion, Jerry Pate. Well, I might not finish today. Yesterday, Pate was sharing eighth place. Today, he'll shoot 87. And Tom Weisskopf, the champion of 1973, also slips. Dispiriting to himself and painful to spectators. I yeah. knew it was coming, and that's why I turned around. So it's, uh... I knew it had to hit somebody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can I have the ball afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> I might sell you my clubs. <laughs> Weisskopf, 76. And Tom Watson, America's defending champion, 80. Like Pate, he won't qualify for the final day. Okay. The championship is approaching its crunch. £75,000 is at stake. Your commentator, Peter Alice. And this is the 13th. Long par 5, 505 yards, and it's Gary Player playing his second shot. And Player's having all sorts of problems today. He's seven over par. Oh. That's a good one. And now Graham Marsh playing with Gary Player. Marsh, of course, from Australia. Two over par. Oh, and another superb shot. Two beautifully played shots on this par five hole, and both these players with, well, reasonable chances of eagle threes. Gary Player first, 18 or 19 feet. Gary! Player electing to hole out first. Well, you can see why Player's having his problems today. Marsh lines up his putt. So easy to slip by and drop strokes. This is Marsh for an eagle three. Frightened a little bit, no doubt, by player's effort. So Marsh now only one over par, but Gary Player, I'm afraid, dropping right out of contention. And now the short fourth. This is a very good par three, a long one from the tee up on top of the hill. This is. Johnny Miller. Oh, look at this. That's only inches short of the hole, dead on line. There's young Ballesteros playing with Johnny Miller. Ballesteros has missed the green on the right. And Miller, well, there he is, absolutely cast iron birdie too. steer us an awkward little chip look at that thick grass waiting to catch the club head played it nicely oh so nicely so a good par three for Ballesteros, a beautiful birdie two for miller there were two shots between them at the start of the day but now they're all level both of them four under par Among the closest challengers, playing the long 13th, Jack Nicholas and Ray Floyd. Nicholas is just short of the green in two. This is Floyd, he's one over par. Oh, come on now. Punt, that's gotta be real good there. Come on, kick back too. Nice. Oh, and it is real good. To within 12 feet of the hole. Nicholas lining up his third shot. He's two over. <laughs> Playing a very lofted club. You can see the sort of sand iron. Throws it forward. Oh, beautifully judged, sir. Beautifully judged. That's a certain birdie for Jack Nicholas. Floyd. 
as for an Eagle Three. No, but it's a certain four. So Floyd, level par. Nicholas, just one over. A marvellous Lynx course, Royal Birkdale. Huge sand hills, tough willow scrub, and trouble everywhere. Now let's have a look at Hubert Green, who's the leading money winner on the American tour this year. He was equal third at the beginning of play today, but he's had a few trials and tribulations so far. Oh, <laughs> right in for an eagle three. Oh, that'll cheer him up, no doubt. This is his partner, young Christy O'Connor. He's one over par, the same as Jack Nicholas, and he's got this putt for an eagle three. No, I don't think so. That was a little tentative. But it's still a birdie for O'Connor, and he's only three strokes off the lead. And not yet on the leaderboard, but having just birdied the 17th to go one over, we have Graham Marsh. This is the final hole of the third round for him, and it's Marsh's third shot. Just not getting the back spin he perhaps hoped for. 12 or 14 feet past. There's Gary Player, out of it now, seven over. Now Marsh, all of, well, 14 or 15 feet. And so Marsh finishes with two birdies and for a round of 72 and begins to look very dangerous indeed. And Ballesteros has taken the lead again over Johnny Miller. He leads by one at the 15th. That's his putt for a par five, but Miller in all sorts of trouble. This is his fifth shot. But that'll be a, a six for Miller, who's had a lot of bad luck at this hole, for both players hit rather wild drives from the tee. Miller had to drop out under a penalty of one, whereas Ballesteros rather got away with it. And now Miller takes a bogey six, and Ballesteros has this for his par five. Quite astonishing, this young Spanish player. He's now two ahead, three under par, against Miller's one under. Now this is Nicholas at the 17th. Both he and his partner, Raymond Floyd, are one over par. He'd really smash that out of that grass. Get over. Come on. That really is immense power. Goes to the back of the green, so Nicholas a chance of going level par. And behind them playing the 16th, Ballesteros and Miller. This uh, good par four, just over 400 yards. And we'll have a look at uh, Johnny Miller's second shot first. Beautiful looking swing. Oh. Oh. I am Ballesteros. From almost the same length as Miller. And just goes off the back of the green. Ballesteros taking a putter. What a good effort. Well, Ballesteros will tap that short one in for his par four. And now Miller, let's see if he can get a birdie three. Oh, looks right in. Oh. Not too pleased. Well, it's shots like that that uh, can lose championships. 
and after all the drama at the 16th, there's no change at the top of the leaderboard. Ray Floyd won over par, Jack Nicklaus level as they come to the 18th. There's Nicholas with his caddy, 14-year-old son, Jack Jr. This is 513 yards, and just look at those parched fairways. It's a par five, of course, but under these ground conditions, easily reachable in two. Floyd's just played his onto the green. Now Nicholas is second. Go, go. Get up. Get up. Oh, dead on line. Just got too much backspin. Could have done with one good bounce forward there. Ray Floyd, very upright putting style. Floyd for an eagle three. How about this for pace? How about that for judgment of pace? Birdie four. Even par. And Nicholas with that familiar, steely look of concentration. He's had lots of holeable putts today. Slipped four and a half feet past. <laughs> so he and Floyd finish level par for three rounds and join Graham Marsh. But how very different it might have been. And finishing immediately behind Nicholas and Floyd. We have a player from Great Britain who's been going along quietly all of the day and keeping pace uh, with most, if not ahead of a lot, of the field. This is Tommy Horton. Hit a huge drive down the last hole. It's the longest I've seen here today, by at least 15 or 20 yards. Look at that, just a hand and arm shot with an iron. Great stuff. Beautiful shot. Horton, one over par, and with a real chance of finishing with an eagle. Well, that's in through the side door. But what a wonderful finish by Tommy Horton. And eagle three puts him one under for the championship, leader in the clubhouse, and tying for second place at this moment in time with Johnny Miller, who's still out on the course. Miller, in fact, at the 17th, with this putt for a birdie four. Right in, so Miller goes back to two under, and it rather looks as though they may go to the 54th hole with still two shots between them. Unless, of course, the young Ballesteros can hold this. If he does, it's an eagle three. <laughs> well, what could you say about that? Ballesteros now three ahead, and the distinct possibility now of there being a Spanish winner of this year's Open Championship. That's how they lie down the 18th fairway, and it's Ballesteros to play first. green nestling right under the windows. Looks a little bit strong. Yes, a club too many really. Leaves him just a, an awkward little chip down off the back of the green. straight, up and down, high action. And he's safely on the green. 
Miller equal second and equal third in past British Open Championships. But it's young Ballesteros who's suddenly become the crowd's hero. Great applause. He's had a bit of luck today. He's got away with some rather loose shots, but he's taken his chance as well. Now, can he get down from here? In two. He's taking a putter. I don't know whether that's a particularly good idea because where the water system has run to the back of the green, there's lush grass. He needs to hit this quite hard. Oh, no. Well, are we going to see some changes here? Miller with a real chance for an eagle. 25 feet. Well, that's got to hurry. Now, Ballesteros. So it sadly takes three from the back of the green, round in 73, but a three-round total of 211, five under par. Now Miller. Also round in 73, so they end this third day as they began it, with just two strokes separating them. And in third place, on a day when the more celebrated British players like Tony Jacklin and Peter Oosterhaus have only just qualified for the final round, it's Tommy Horton who's there with the big boys. Tony, you've uh, just scraped in for the last day at the Open. Uh, but nice to be playing on the last day, nevertheless. How do you think, or if you were a betting man, who do you fancy? Well, of course, it's always very interesting, and you need to be a mind reader to know, and you know, as well as I do, that in golf, it's just that element of mystery that comes into it, that little element of luck just at the right time, that one putt whenever you need it. Ballesteros, to me, after his start yesterday, got back into it, and he's seen now that champions such as Miller you know, fellas that he's probably adored for years, you know, can also, they're human, they can also make errors. And I think maybe that may be enough momentum just to get him going. But again, any one of four or five who have that element of, I played with Raymond Floyd the first two rounds, playing super, con very much within himself, very concentrated, super. I mean, not wasting hardly any shots, putting beautifully. He could come in well, and of course, the bear, he could always pounce, you know, he's always there, you feel. I mean, yesterday he had so many putts that could have gone in that didn't, and one feels that today they just may. Well, never mind, here's to whoever is going to be the champion, and Tony, here's to you. I'll drink to that. Thank you, Peter. Mm. Saturday, July the 10th. Can Ballesteros possibly make it? He's newborn into world-class golf, and some say this very innocence makes him oblivious to pressure. But can this really be true? <laughs> now, against his own heroes, Nicholas. Floyd. Good one, Raymond. Marsh. All these five behind. Horton. An outsider, but four behind. And Ballesteros' partner once more at the rear of the field, Johnny Miller, just two behind. Against that lot, what price Ballesteros? He proceeds to hit his first drive into the rough. Anything may happen. And that empty cliché makes still others dream of miracles. Among them, Barnes of Britain. Barnes on the green at the short fourth, only two over par overnight, but struggling today. He's four over. Oh, look. Oh. You don't see many closer than that. And at the first hole, 
Young ballast steer us in all sorts of problems. Hit a wild drive into the rough, took three to reach the green, and he's got a long, long putt, all of 20 feet or so, if he's to save his par four. This is just the sort of start this youngster really didn't want to have. Well, would you believe it? What a marvellous putt under pressure by this young 19-year-old Spaniard. And he gets his par four after all. And now Miller, with one considerably shorter, this is for a par four. And what can you say about that? That's the worst possible start for Miller, a bogey five, and straight away he's three behind as they go across to the second tee. Ballesteris five under. Miller, two under. And already, the most exciting position beginning to build up. Jack Nicholas is down to one under. This is his tee shot at the fourth. He's just got a birdie at the third. Oh, and just look at that. Are we going to see one of Nicholas's great last round charges? Now, Ray Floyd. Nicholas's playing partner. Still level par. <laughs> you don't see two more wonderful shots than that from a range of about 205 or 6 yards. Floyd to putt first. Beautiful putt. So Floyd goes to one under. Nick this from, well, about six feet or so. Oh, maybe a little more, eight feet. You always feel with Nicholas, he's giving every shot, everything he's got. Go on, get in, get in, get in. Also for a birdie. So Nicholas joins Miller at two under. <laughs> and behind him, Ballesteris at the second hole in a dreadful place. <laughs> Miller drove quite safely down the fairway, but Ballesteris hooked again way up into the sand hills. He's about 180 yards from the green. All sorts of bunkers and humps and hollers in the way. Very difficult shot, and of course very chancy with the ground as hard as it is. Well, he smashes it out of the the raspberry bushes, but catches the bunker. Well, he's done well to get it as far as that. Well, Ballesteros has hit two wild hooks in these opening two holes, and we'll just have to wait and see whether his swing stands up to the enormous pressure that's going to be put on him by everyone in this field, including his partner, Johnny Miller. This is his second shot to the second hole. That's the sort of pressure this young man is going to get thrown at him for the next three or four hours. Right up the face, an awkward one, just the sort you don't want, about 45 yards. And he gets it out very well indeed. How long, one wonders, can he rely on his magic putter? Well, we've got a chance to see. He held that monster putt on the first green. Seems almost inconceivable that he should be able to do it again on the second. But who knows? Oh. So he drops a stroke. Miller with a great chance for a birdie three. Missed that little tiddler on the first. Well, he gets two shots back in one hole, 
Ballesteros now four under, Miller three under, and in fact only two shots separating the first four. And ahead lies Royal Birkdale's great sixth hole. 468 yards par four, today destined to prove the most significant hole of the championship. At this moment, confronting Nicholas, but already today the monster which has gobbled up notable victims. Christy O'Connor, Jr. It's a seven, three over par for O'Connor. Graham Marsh. And a double bogey six for Marsh. And he too has lost all chance. Horton, his partner, takes five and also loses ground. All these players enduring their grief in semi-private, out of range of the television cameras. And now, Nicholas. Playing a one iron. It looks to have pushed that away to the right of the green. Oh, ah, that's a ring. Very hard to ah. Go in the trees. We may never see that again. Nicholas playing another ball. Playing four now. Floyd just short in two as Nicholas's ball comes up. Catches the green, but that's four strokes. And of course, if he can't find that first ball, which he fired away into the bushes on the right, this championship could end here, or the hopes of winning this championship for Nicholas. No, no, you asked me how mine was. I think all hope being given up now, so what a tragedy for Nicholas. He'll have to settle for his second ball. Now Floyd, from the front of the green, got a chance, a real chance of getting a par four. This is a very difficult hole, primarily because the drive is so awkward. There's a bunker right across the middle of the fairway, just at the wrong sort of length. It makes the second shot so difficult, and that's not a good shot from Floyd. Leaves it way, way short. Now, Nicholas. This is his fifth shot. Well, 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 there we're going to see him drop three strokes here. Floyd, this for a par four. So Floyd drops a stroke to par. And Nicholas, faced with, well, <laughs> must look a mile in length. And remember, this is to drop two strokes if he holds it. Well, that's full of courage, but nevertheless a tragedy for Nicholas. Dropping two strokes to par, and that could be the end of his challenge. Coming up behind them on this same notorious six hole, Ballesteros and Miller. And again, the young Spanish player in trouble. He somehow got to get out and over that bunker. Miller, incidentally, is in one of those bunkers. But in fact, Ballesteros is in the bushes where, or close to the bushes where uh, Nicholas lost his ball a few moments ago. Well, he's very lucky to have any sort of swing at this at all. And he caught the edge of the bunker and gone down into the sand. He's in the bunker next to Miller, but of course Miller playing three to Ballesteros is four. And that's a pretty good shot. A little bit closer than Floyd was a moment or two ago.
Uh, pretty good. But that's four strokes. Uh, the hands of Johnny Miller. That long index finger down. Reverse overlap putting grip. A great fighting four by Miller. Not one player in the last three groups has got a par on this hole. Now, once again, the young Spaniard faced with a demon putt to try and save a stroke. So he drops two to par, just the same as Nicholas did earlier, and loses the lead to Johnny Miller. And once again, this mighty sixth hole has seen a few heads roll. At this point, let's transfer to the final hole. This young man needs two from here for a new course record of 66. He's Mark James of Britain, 22 and a first year professional. So this for the record. James then finishes six under for the round, level par for the championship. Meanwhile, out on the course at the ninth hole, Jack Nicholas and Ray Floyd. Both level par, Floyd having dropped a stroke at the eighth. No, oh, certainly doesn't look as if he's going to drop a stroke here. That was beautifully played shot. Come down. And a little strong. Rather fortunate, perhaps, to have held short of the big rough. Nicholas, now 36 years of age. He's won the Open twice in Scotland and never yet in England. Using a putter through the rough grass and using it very well indeed. Ensures himself of a par four. Now Floyd for a birdie three. Beautifully done. And who's to say that even now these two aren't in with a chance of doing something really sensational? <laughs> Behind them, Ballesteris at the eighth. And again, he's in an awful lot of trouble with his second shot. Almost impossible shot. And whereas he hit a lot of wayward shots yesterday and got away with them, the putting touch has deserted him today. And he's in all sorts of trouble. As he surveys, we go and have a look at his partner, Johnny Miller. Miller a stroke ahead. And in sharp contrast to young Ballesteris, Miller keeping the ball in play with irons from the tee and showing how much older he is in golfing years than his young partner. And this is where a favourite club might come to grief. Now, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Well, he's still some 40 yards wide of the green up on the top of those sand hills. With an awkward one down, you can see he's on that. Very dry, sandy lie. This is his third shot. It's amazing how uh, many times he's found the ball in a hittable position. And that's way past the flag, and with Miller close to the hole, chances of victory slipping away for Ballesteros. This for a par four. Very 
fast putt down the hill. Big swing. No, so that's a bogey five. And yet another stroke drop to par. Now Miller with a real chance for a birdie three. Ballesteris now three strokes behind Miller. Miller four under par. Ten holes left for him and fewer for his lingering rivals, of whom Nicholas hovers over a putt at the 11th that could put him one under, like Ballesteros and Floyd. It would appear that those sixth and eighth holes may prove decisive. Miller, a notorious front-runner, continues to play like a thoroughbred. Three more pars, then at the twelfth, a birdie. Ballesteros clambers like a mountain goat from trouble spot to trouble spot. At the eleventh, a treble bogey seven. At the twelfth, a bogey four. And Floyd and Nicholas, knowing from scoreboards and distant size of the Spaniards' misfortunes, strive to overcome him. Not now for the championship, but for the £6,000 for second place. So this once again for a birdie at the 14th. Looking good. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, at last. And so Nicholas and Floyd are both one under. And now Ballesteris, two over at the 13th. This, of course, a par five hole. This, his third shot. Just look at that for a beautifully played stroke. A certain birdie four. Miller's third shot. <laughs> well, what an incredible eagle three for Miller. And now Ballesteris is eight strokes behind. And after such a promising beginning, Desting now, surely, to finish amongst the also-rans. Meanwhile, ahead at the 72nd hole, those who never quite made it come home. Suzuki, the Japanese, won over par. Brian Barnes. Two over par. O'Connor Jr. Level par. Good enough to share fifth place. Tom Kite, a young American. Also level par. And now, for those remaining, the championship at stake and all to play for in the fight for second place. As Nicholas and Floyd come to this final hole, Floyd's second shot. Great shot. He's one under and in third place. A long way short, but look at this ball running, 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 running. Oh, what about that? Incredible shot, on line, it must have run all of 80 or 90 yards. Putting a great deal of pressure on Jack Nicholas, who's two under. Nicholas has just birdied the 17th. And that looks as if it may be in the bunker. Yes, just didn't carry the extra two or three yards. Caught the sand, there it is. Raymond Floyd, the American Masters champion. What a good show he's put up here this week. And Jack Nicklaus, whose record in this championship, well, you, you can read it and read it again, and it's still quite incredible. Even if he'd never won the championship, the number of times he's finished second and third are quite extraordinary. And this great battle for second place goes on, but let's look at this awkward little bunker shot of Nicholas on the down slope, very little green to work with.
Oh, well, perhaps a little lucky to get the down slope, but that's down to within a couple of feet, and I would say a certain birdie four for Nicholas. And now a very important putt for Floyd. This to finish three under par. Nicholas looks as if he's going to be three under. Turned right away. So Floyd will tap this one in for a round of 70 today to finish the championship at two under par, and in all probability that will secure him third place. Now Nicholas with this nasty little putt to go three under. <laughs> well, that was a real backdoor effort, but Nicholas with a final round of 69 and a total of 285, that's three under par, and it looks as if he must take second place. <laughs> Only two pairs left out on the course now, Ballesteros and Miller at the 17th. Miller virtually certain of winning the championship, playing his third shot. Oh, and look at that. Certain birdie for Miller. Ballesteros battling to get back into second place. But, well, he's got a long, long putt here for an eagle three. Huge putt. <laughs> right in for an eagle. Well, isn't that incredible? <laughs> Miller actually congratulates him on that monster putt. Meanwhile, at the 18th hole, the final hole, we see Tommy Horton. Up against the railings, one over par. How about that? Good shot. Right shot. Uh, didn't quite get the backspin he wanted. Meanwhile, 500 yards up the fairway, preparing to drive the final shots at Ballesteros and Miller. Back to the green to see Tommy Horton playing his final strokes in this year's championship. Oh, yes, what a great putt to finish with for Horton and how well he's played in this championship. 73 today, level power for the championship. And his playing partner, Graham Marsh, finishes with four over par. Stout effort all round. And now the final scenes. Miller and Ballesteros coming down the 18th. Miller, eight under par. Oh, looks good. Here she comes. Pitch is short. Look at it run on. And how about that for the final strokes? Beautiful shot. And now what can Ballesteros do? Can he possibly, even now, come back and share second place? He needs a birdie here to tie with Jack Nicklaus. He's in the rough, but not lying too badly. Fairly lofted club, six or seven iron. Shot. Oh, uh, hit it well, but he's dragged it. We'll never see the end of that. Twenty-eight years of age, he's already won the United States Open Championship and now is certain to win this year's British Open. And now Ballesteros. He's got to get that birdie if he's going to tie with Jack Nicklaus and what a difficult little shot he's got. He's got to chip it between those bunkers with the flag only six or seven yards on the green the other side. And the cheeky lad, he's run it through the middle and played an absolute gem of a stroke. What a great amount of pleasure this young man's given us this week.
but now Johnny Miller. Putting for an eagle. This for a 65. Oh, no. But that's a great round for Miller, a 66, equaling Mark James's record set up just an hour or so ago. A total of 279, nine under par. Six strokes clear of the field, the largest winning margin since Arnold Palmer's victory at Troon in 1962. A Ballesteros with this putt to tie with Jack Nicholas for second place and to win £5,250. in the middle. What a prospect for the future and what an exciting end to this championship. The world's greatest traditional championship has been won by probably the world's greatest current professional, Johnny Miller, with the lowest winning last round in its history, 66. <laughs> Ballesteros is the boy who brought this open all its emotion and drama. But Miller is the man who conquered it. Champion golfer of the year, Johnny Miller. I'd like to congratulate uh, especially Seve Ballesteros and Jack Nicholas for their joint runner-up and uh, thank the rest of the guys for making it as easy as it was for them. <laughs>